Okay. Ready? So last class uh, we were talking about logarithmic functions and specifically how we could use those to solve equations that we normally cannot solve. So that's, we really have two more topics or it's all in the same like scope in terms of logarithmic functions but two more ideas and then we can start talking about the final. All right. So I would like for us to take a look at trying to solve an equation like this. So we're trying to solve for x, right? Trying to figure out what x we would plug in right here to make this thing true, right? So this is an example of what we call an exponential equation. And in terms of equations, here are the types of equations that we should be able to solve right now. Linear equations and quadratic equations. So these two we should, we should be good with already. Linear equations, you isolate the variable. Quadratic equations, you move everything to one side and then you either factor or use a quadratic formula, right? But for both of these, the, the variable was down in the base, not up in the exponent. So anytime you're looking at an exponential equation, the variable is up in the exponent. So how do we solve these? Well, we're going to go and do exactly what we did last class. We're going to, we're going to somehow bring the, the logarithm into the problem because the log has that property that allows you to pull the, um, drop things out front. Okay, so that's, that's the way we're going to go about this. So first step for this is to try and isolate, isolate this term, get this by itself. So how can I get that by itself? Subtract 14. All right, so what happens when you take 14 away from 209? What do you get? 195. 195. So we subtract 14 on both sides, get 195, right? So now is the crucial step. We are going to come in on both sides of the equation with a logarithm. And the logarithm that we're going to use is the natural logarithm. And that is because we have a key on our calculator that allows us to do natural logs, right? So I'm going to take the natural log of the left side and whatever I do to the left side, I must do to the right side. So I take natural log of 195 over here. All right. Now the property of logarithms says that this can now drop out in front of the natural log. That was a property that I gave you from last class. So out in front now, we have 2x minus 4. And go ahead and put that in parentheses. And that's now sitting in front of, so times natural log of 7. And that must equal natural log of 195. And now what we've done is we've, we've, got, we've taken the exponent, the, the variable, and we have now pulled it out, and it's no longer an exponent, right? And that's a good thing, all right? That it's down, it's no longer up. So the rest of this is just calculator stuff. So what I'd like for you to do, go ahead and take natural log of 7 on your calculator. And let's just do like three decimal places. We'll go 2x minus 4 times, what is that, 1 point, let's say 96, or 946. 
And then go ahead and take natural log of 195 on the other side. And that's going to be about 5.273. Y'all getting that OK? OK, we're trying to get x by itself. So now what I'm going to do, since this is multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by 1.946. Divide by 1.946, and that will make that reduce out. And on the right side, you just use your calculator for that. So here's where we are. What's still on the left-hand side? 2x minus 4. Now, I don't need the parentheses anymore because it's the only thing over there. So 2x minus 4 equals the right side, which we got on our calculator. I'm getting something like 2.7096, something like that. So you can put 2.709. That would be fine. If you want to round that 9 up, then it would actually become 2.710. That 9 essentially becomes a 10. And now, what type of equation is this? That's linear, OK? That's a linear equation. So now we just finish it off, isolate the x. So add 4 to both sides. So now you should have 2x equals 6.710, right? And finally, you divide both sides by 2. Three point three five five. There we go. We've solved for x. All right? So that means if we were to come back here to this original equation and we were to write 7 raised to the 2 times x, x is 3.355 minus 4 and then add 14 to it, if we were to do this computation, we should get something very close to 2.09. Uh, we wouldn't get it exactly because we rounded, right? But we would be really close to 209, all right? So that is how you solve exponential equations. You isolate the piece that has the variable up in the exponent. You get it by itself. Then you come in with log on both sides. And then after you do that, you should have a linear equation at some point. All right? So um, there's one on the review for the final. You all want to go through that one? OK. So what is it? It's like 5 raised to the. Oh, it's 3 raised to the? 2x minus 7. Minus 7. Plus 6 equals 120. Equals 120. OK. Tanisha, what's my first step, Tanisha? Is Devon here or Aaron or Gia? OK, I didn't think so. Tanisha, what am I doing first? Subtract 6, right? Because we see it's an exponential equation, right? We're trying to isolate this thing. So we subtract 6 on both sides. What would that give you, Tanisha? 3 uh, raised to the 2x minus 7 equals 114. OK, now what, what do we do next, Tanisha? OK, so we want to move that x minus, the 2x minus 7 out in front, right? But we can't do that until we do what? We have to do the log first, OK? So you can't just take this and drop it. That's illegal. You have to have logs first, all right? So natural log on the left side first, and then natural log on the right side. 
Now you can take this and drop it out front. Ali uh, Alyssa? No Alyssa today? Miranda? Okay, Miranda, what's up with this now? What should my next line be? Uh huh. Okay, so that's you're going to do that on your calculator, right? Yes. So natural log of three. So I pulled the two x minus seven out front. I put it in parentheses, and then what are you getting for these natural logs? So the natural log of three, I'm getting one point zero nine eight. Okay. Okay, what do y'all think? Anyone checking that? Getting that same thing? Okay. All right. Laura, you, you, you up to speed here? Okay, so what would be the next step, Laura? Good. Divide by 1.098 on both sides. And by the way, just so you know, like you could distribute this through the parentheses instead but I don't recommend it because this is just going to be cleaner. When you, when you divide it, it's gone, and then, then you'll have nice numbers over here, okay? And then do this on your calculator. Yes? Can we, uh, you know, roll that number to 1.1? If you want to, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm not going to take off for, for that on this problem. It's more of the process. Like, the big picture here is that we now have a way of solving equations that we couldn't solve before today, or last class. Okay, so Laura, what did you get over here on, on this, this side here? 4.313. 4.313? And the left side is still 2x minus 7. So Laura, how are you going to go about solving this the rest of the way now? Um, add 7, good. Add 7 to both sides. So you'll have a 2x over here, and when you add 7 to that, what's that, 11 point? Three one three, and then go ahead and finish it off. What do you do to finish it? Divide by two. Okay. So what do you get when you divide by two? Five point six five six something like that. Okay, good. What do you think? Pretty straightforward? Uh -huh. Okay. Ready for something a little harder? Uh -huh. No? Just. Nah, you know what? We won't do it. We won't do it. For real? Yeah, we won't do it. All right, that's what I like. All right, that's we won't cool. do that. Um, I was thinking about it for a bonus question, but. I don't know if it matters or not. Yes. But the review you gave us last Wednesday and the one you just sent out to us. They're different problems? Yeah. Are they the same length? Do they have the same? Um, I think so. I should know. That did, did, is there, do we have a printed copy of both or no? Can I just see? I thought I sent the exact same file. Let me go around here. Oh, this, this actually was the final from last. So it. It, it's, uh, let me see, I may have tweaked it. Yeah, this is, this is just an old, this is just an old final. So there, car equation of the line, slope, it's okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. This is, I mean, this is an, another version of it. So, so now you have two reviews, if you like, yeah. Okay. All right, so now we have kind of our last little topic here. And this has to do with something you may have heard of before. Half-Life. So I know there's a video game out there called Half-Life and that's not what I'm referring to. So does anyone know what the half-life of something is? What this is referring to? No? 
Drugs. Okay, so it's used in drugs. Um, so let's say that you know you have some a headache or something like that, and you, you pop some ibuprofen in to help you out, right? So I'm gonna just ask Google here what uh, what the half life of ibuprofen is. What is the half life of ibuprofen? 1.8 hours. Okay, so what does that mean? So let, I'm going to try and explain what half-life means. So let's say you take, um, you pop a couple of them, right? Maybe you take 400 milligrams. I think most ibuprofen tablets are like 200 milligrams. So let's say you take 400 milligrams, and this gets, starts going through your body, right? So those 400 milligrams are going to slowly um, diminish away. The effect of the drug is going to start to taper off, right? So it's absorbed into your bloodstream, and then it kind of goes away, right? And then maybe six hours later, you take more, right? Whatever it is, if you're in a lot of pain or something. So 400, the half-life, okay, according to Google, the half-life is, it said 1.8 to 2 hours. I'm going to put 1.9 hours, all right? just to give us kind of a weird number to work with. So what that means is this. If we look at this like a table, if this is time and this is the milligrams, okay, and we're talking about ibuprofen here. Ibuprofen is, is what's the brand name for ibuprofen? Like ibuprofen is the generic name for the drug, but what's the, Advil, Advil? Advil is like a name brand ibuprofen, but it's the same thing. It's the same drug. Okay, so Advil is ibuprofen. All right, so let's say you take 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. So at time zero, you pop the pills. You've got 400 milligrams in your system, right? Half-life means that at time 1.9, so, and this is going to be in hours, so at 1.9 hours, how much of this drug is still effective in your body? Half of it, right? That's what the half-life means. That means you have 200 milligrams left, okay? When would you have 100 left? How much more time needs to go by for half of it to go away? 1.9 again. So this would happen, what's 1.9 plus 1.9? 3.8 hours? Are you all following me? So 1.9 and then another 1.9 added to that would be 3.8, right? Mm -hmm. So an hour, 1.9 hours later, you've got 200 milligrams. 1.9 hours after that, another half of it goes away, okay? Mm -hmm. What's 1.9 more than that? 5.7, yes? 5.7 hours later, you have how much? 50. See, what's happening is that it's halving each time. It keeps halving and halving and halving and halving. All right, and then what about, uh, what's the next one? Wait, did I go too far there? Four point, no because that would, two hours would be 5.8, so yeah. Okay, so what would the next 1.9 hours be? 7.6 7. 7. hours later, how much do you have in your system still? 25 milligrams, right? Mm -hmm. Now with this, <clears throat> with this idea, is it ever truly gone? No. no, because if you keep taking half of half of half, right, you would have what? 12 and a half next, then like six something, and then like three milligrams, and then like 1.5 milligrams. And so it never really goes away, but what happens is it, it diminishes away to the point where it's not even detectable anymore, okay? And essentially it's not in your system. So what they say with, with ibuprofen, with Advil, is that you, you can redose yourself like, like every six to eight hours. They say it's okay to take another dose. And the reason is because you start out with 400 milligrams, six to eight hours later, you only have, you know, 25 to 30 milligrams still in your system, so it's okay to 
to put more in there. Does that make sense? Okay, so this idea of half-life works for most medications, right? Um, what was I doing just the other day? There was a half-life or something. Forget. We were talking about it at the house, but um, let's do another drug. Yeah? Because every drug has a different half-life, all right? This is a safe drug. This is a drug you can go buy at the local pharmacy, HEB. You can get it at the gas station, right? Let's do something that's not legal. So what do you all want to do that's not legal? Xanax. What's that? Xanax. Xanax? Xanax. Yeah, so Xanax is, is, is illegal. It can be prescribed, though, right? So it's, uh, it's, yeah, let's do it. So what is Xanax? I don't even know how to spell it. Z X. Is that, no? I don't even know. I don't think it's spelled X -A -N -Z. like that. Oh, X-A-N? X A whatever Xanax okay Xanax whatever okay so what is it I'll look it up so what is Xanax for anxiety Xanax yeah okay okay it's a controlled substance can cause paranoid or suicidal I, ideation and impair memory. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, whatever. It's for a lot of different things. I'm thinking of what is it? A lot of uh, college students take something that keeps them awake to help Adderall. them study. Adderall. Adderall. That's the one. We'll do that one next. Okay. Xanax Half Life. 11.2 hours. Now, I don't know what the prescription would be for this. Like, I'm not sure how many milligrams a person would take of Xanax. I, I just don't know. I know with Advil because I've taken it, okay? Um, 400 milligrams of Advil is a pretty moderate dose for a, an adult. You can probably go as high as 800. Actually low dose, like 2.5. 2.5, okay. Yeah, I don't know. So, you know, whatever it is, what I want you to understand, though, is that whatever you start with, with Xanax, whatever you start with, right, it's 11.2 hours later, you still have half of it there, instead of two hours later, right, with the, with the ibuprofen? Make sense? Okay, what about Adderall? Adderall, half-life. 10 hours. All right? So Adderall is a stimulant, okay? It's basically, um, Adderall is like a, it's a stimulant. What is it compared to? I forget. My wife compares it to something. But it's uh, <clears throat> got a pretty long half-life, right? Ten hours? Yeah. No, that's not? Because I took 30 milligrams of it last, like, six hours. What do you mean, six hours? So you're telling me that you take Adderall is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, all right. So, yeah, if you're taking Adderall, I'm not going to, you know, you, you volunteered that information. Oh, I didn't. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's for treating different things. My, my brother-in-law takes it every day. The thing about Adderall is it can be used incorrectly. And that's the thing that's dangerous about it um, because you have to have a very um, good sleep schedule to take it right and all this stuff. So, anyways, it can be abused. But that, you know, six, so six hours later, you, you still got half of, almost half of that dose is still with you, right? All right, let's, let's do something else. Let's do another, let's do something that's just illegal, completely illegal. How about heroin? Half-life of heroin? Oh, wow, it's not even coming up. Hmm. Two to six minutes. Like yeah. <laughs> well, it looks, uh, that's what I'm seeing here. I'm not sure, but it, it seems pretty short. Half life. We stated that the heroin has a half life of two to six minutes, which is correct, but heroin is a pro drug that's rapidly metabolized. So, two to six minutes, right? That's, that's extremely fast compared to this, right? So, you don't, you don't. 
No one's going to volunteer that they're on heroin here today, right? So, you know, that's, that's going to be something where it's a quick, right? And then within a few, you know, within an hour or two, you're probably, you know, ready for more, right? And that's why it's such a bad thing. They have what? Mm -hmm. Oh, a documentary about it? Yeah. So, do you kind of get the idea of what half-life is? Like, everything kind of has a half-life in terms of medications, but it's not just medications. It can be a lot of different things. Um, another, another important uh, uh, substance that has half-life is radioactive material. So, if you have, uh, like, a nuclear weapon, and it has a radioactive, some radioactive elements within it, right? Those things are very dangerous. And why are they dangerous? What, what is it with radioactive el elements like uranium and stuff? What's dangerous about it? Do you all know? Radiation. radiation, right? But what is that? I mean, what is the radiation? So you've got this little chunk of uranium, okay? This little, little chunk of uranium right here. What makes it dangerous? Yeah, it, it's basically like a microwave, okay, but you don't have to turn it on. It's just always on. And what it's doing is it's sending out these very, very, very powerful, you know, like when you go and you go to a dentist or something, they put that lead vest on you and they do an x-ray? That's to protect your organs from the x-rays. Radioactive material has things that are worse than x-rays that go in and they actually get into your cells, the cells of your organs and everything, and they alter the DNA within, they, they basically fry the DNA within your cells, and then your cells basically forget what they're supposed to do, kind of like wipes out the, their ability to, to function properly. So you start to basically die from the inside out, if that makes sense, right? So radioactive material, it has half-life also. So let's look up something, okay? So let's look up, uh, let's first figure out what uranium is in nuclear weapons? U-235. U-235. The two fissile materials used in nuclear weapons are U-235. I'm probably going to get flagged by, U by Google today. <laughs> Looking up drugs and, drugs and bombs. <clears throat> okay, that's enough. Stop. Wow. Half-life of uranium-235. 700 million years. 700 million years. Okay, stop. Okay. 700 million years. 700 million years. So it takes 700 million years for half of it to decay away. That's, that's, a, that's a number that you can't even really put your head around, right? So if you had one pound of uranium-235 sitting here, right? Well, we wouldn't want that. But if we did, then 20 years from now, it's basically all still there, right? The bad stuff's still there. You'd have to wait 700 million years for that pound to become basically half a pound of bad stuff. And then another 700 million years for that half pound to become a quarter pound another 700 million years for that to become an eighth of a pound. Does that make sense? So that half-life is, is huge compared to these other drugs, right? So that's why nuclear weapons are so bad. That, I mean, not, I'm not saying they're bad. They kind of keep everyone in check a little bit, but the same, no? I mean, they kind of do, right? Right? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, I mean it, it does kind of keep us all in check a little bit. That we can wipe ourselves out if we needed to. It'd wipe everything out, right? We've had that ability since the 50s, right? 1950s, we've had the ability to wipe our entire species out if we wanted to. So it kind of keeps us in check. But it's not going away, right? I mean, like, we have this stuff. It's there. You can't just go throw it in a canister and, and it's gone, right? It's there. Um, there, I guess HBO, there's something on uh, HBO about Chernobyl. Chernobyl, I, don't, I haven't watched the documentary, but, you know, they had a nuclear reactor that got out of control. And, and that, um, that nuclear reactor, was, that, was back, that was back, I think, in the 80s. And it's still uninhabited. 
in that area, and th I think there was only like 10 pounds of, 10 or 20 pounds of, of nuclear material that they lost control of. But its half-life is, is very, very large, so it's, you know, it's not gonna just fizzle away. We're all still gonna be, we're all gonna be gone by the time, you know, that's still, still gonna be there. Okay, so, when it comes to drugs, uranium, whatever it is, half-lives, right, these are exponential, these are exponential models. So you remember how we did like the, the tearing of the paper and we did a chart and we did the bacteria and we did a chart, all that? And we said, what, what function would make this happen? All of the half-lives are gonna be exponential functions. So I'm gonna put a formula on the board right now that is the formula for all half-lives and then we're gonna use it to do a, a word problem, all right? So here's the formula that we need. And how do I want to do this? Um, on the uh, exam review, on the very last problem, can I just see what the formula? I use P. Oh, no. Not that. Where's the other one? Where's that other one? I did P sub zero, right? Yeah, P equals P sub zero. Yeah, OK. I want to follow that same format. All right, so here's the formula. P equals P sub zero E to the KT. Now this formula, don't let it freak you out. You've actually seen this formula, but it looked a little different. The one that we used was this one. We use that for money, for, for simple interest, right? This was our, our interest formula. These, these two formulas are exactly the same. They just, they just have different meanings. So this one, you know, the P is the A. The P, I'm going to say, you'll hear me say P sub zero or P naught. That's, that's what the P here is. And then E is E, right? T is T. The only difference is that instead of K, we, um, instead of R, we're using K, all right? So you remember what R was here? That was our interest rate, right? The K here is gonna be our, our decay rate for the half-life. So somehow that, that, that number here is gonna tell us, you know, ibuprofen, heroin, U-235, like depending on what substance we're talking about, that K is gonna change, all right? P sub zero, what was P over there? The amount that we started with, right? This is the amount of material that's there to start, like 400 milligrams, whatever it was, right? 10 pounds of uranium. This is the starting amount. And what is this number gonna be? What was it over there? This number was how much we end with, right? After a certain amount of time? And that's P over there. So P is the amount that's present at the end. All right, so this is your end amount, this is your start amount, this is your time, years and years, and this is your decay or growth rate. When we talk about half-lives, it's going to always be decay, it's going away, but over here, our rate was actually growing because it was money, you know, you're putting money into a bank and the money is going to grow. Or if you borrowed money, you're going to owe more money at the end. So this K can either be, um, can either represent uh, decay or growth. All right? You ready to do a problem? All right. So the problem that you have on the review, it might be slightly different than the problem that you're going to get on the test. So I want make sure that you understand the entire process of what I'm about to do now. All right? So here it goes. I'm going to leave this formula up here. And let's do ibuprofen. Okay? Find the formula for the exponential decay of Advil
which is um, one point, let's go with two, two hours instead of 1.9. Let's go Advil, comma, which has a half-life of two hours. All right. That's the first part of the problem, okay? So we're gonna call this part A. Part B is gonna be how much Advil is present after one day if you take 600 milligrams, question mark. All right, and then the last question is if you take 800 milligrams, how long until there is five milligrams left. All right, so the first part of this question is we are going to find the formula that we are going to use to answer parts B and C. All right? All we're given all we know about Advil is its half-life, right? From that information, we should be able to come up with a formula. And I have to show you how to do that, okay? So you all ready to do part A? Okay, here it goes. So for part A, we said it's gonna take two hours for half of it to go away, right? Agreed? So looking at this formula, I want you to just answer a question real quick. At time is zero, okay, when t is zero, how much should I have? How much, how much of the drug should be present at time is zero? Okay, so you're looking at part B, all right? Which is correct if you're looking at part B, but let's act like part B is not here yet, okay? Wouldn't you agree that at time is zero, you take the drug, you should have everything, right? Everything is there. So we're going to look at time zero. Okay, look at time zero here. If time is zero, this is zero, right? Which makes this zero. What's e to the zero? What is anything raised to the zero? We talked about this last class. One, right? So if this is one, then how much is there? This is the amount that's there, right? It would be equal to this, right? P zero. If that's a one, then the amount that's there is equal to just that. So at time is zero, no matter what the drug is, or if this is uranium, no matter what it is, this right here represents how much we started with, right? Okay. Okay. Now, what do we know? When time is two, now I'm gonna use two here for T, but we need to remember we're in hours, not in years right now, right? So when T is two, how much should be there? Half of it. Half of what? Half of what we started with, right? So do you agree that at time equals two, we should have half of what we started with? Right? Okay, so I'm going to use this piece of information right now, okay? I know that no matter what it is, no matter what drug it is or anything, this will always be true. This first one's always true, right? The amount you start with is the amount you start with. But because we're talking about Advil, at time is two hours, we should have half of what's there. If this were heroin, that number would be different. If this were uranium-235, that number would be different, right? So this is the part that really dictates what's gonna happen. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to use this formula right now, and I'd like to replace, I'd like to replace everything. So look at me, I'm gonna write that formula down. Let's put the equal sign here. 
once you put P sub zero here, I want you to put E, leave the left side blank for now, K, and then I want you to put times two. So what we're saying is when T is two, when time is two, how much, this is gonna calculate how much is there, right? How much should be there when T is two? How much is there? Half of it, half of P zero. So the amount that should be there should be half of P zero. Okay, so my left side, the amount that's left when, when T is two is that, that formula, right? Do you all see that? This formula is that? Sure? All right. So what, is, what, is, uh, what are the things that I don't know in this formula? There's two things I don't know. What are they? The amount I started with. I don't know what that is, right? And what else don't I know? The decay rate, right? I don't know two things here, right? However, could I do this? Could I divide both sides by P0? Could I? Yeah, right? I mean, this is multiplication right there. That's multiplication right there. So I can just divide both sides by P sub 0. If I do that, then what I'm left with is 1 half equals E to the K times 2, right? You all follow me? Y'all don't seem like you're following. Yes, no, maybe so. Yes. All right, now look at this. How many things do we not know? Just one thing. I just don't know the decay rate, right? So this is an equation where the thing I'm solving for is up in the exponent, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we solve for k when k is up in the exponent? Natural. You have to bring the natural log in, right? So let's do that. Let's take the natural log on both sides. The natural log of a half equals the natural log of e. Can I write instead of k times 2, can I put 2k? Is that all right? Instead of k times 2, just put 2 times k. Natural log on both sides. Now, Anissa, what's going to happen on the right-hand side? Why did we bring the natural log in there? What do I want to be able to do with that? Isolate. Isolate, yes. But it's up, it's up here, right, right now? But because I brought the natural log in, I'm allowed to drop it out front, right? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to drop it out front, and that's going to be my next line, okay? So I have natural log of a half equals 2k times natural log of e. And I told you last class that there's something very special about natural log of e, which you could confirm on your calculator. What is the natural log of e always? One. The natural log of E is 1. Is that all right? Okay, Luke, you're up. So we are at the point here where I've got natural log of a half equals 2K. So what, what do you think we should do now, Luke? This is 1, so it's really gone. So there's where we are. Yeah, on your calculator, right? Let's do natural log of a half to figure out what that is. Don't worry, we're going to do another one of these after we're done, just so we can run through the whole thing again, all right? So what are you getting on natural log of a half, Luke? Uh, negative 0 0.693. 0 0.693. Okay, so for this, let's go maybe like five decimal places, just to be a little more accurate. 0.69, 315, okay, good enough. The more decimals you go, the more accurate your answer is going to be. This equals 2K, right, Luke? Yes. So final step, okay, and so when you divide that by 2, Luke, what are you getting? Really? I don't. I, yeah, you should get like point three. Some double check that. 
three, four, six, six, something like that, yeah. equals k. Okay. So look, let's just let's just recap. All that we used to get k was what? What was the only thing we needed to know to figure out what k was? What was the only thing that someone had to give us? The time, the half-life, right? Someone gave us the half-life. As soon as we had the half-life, we were able to generate the k, right? Okay, so now let's go back to our formula. The master formula looks like this. The master formula looks like uh, P equals P sub zero E to the K T, right? That's the master formula for these uh, decay and growth models. We know K now, right? For Advil, for Advil, here's what the formula is. P equals P sub zero E to the negative 0.3466t. And I'm going to box that because that's the formula I'm going to use from here on out to answer parts B and C. So if someone tells me how much is there in the beginning, and I know how much time's gone by, I can tell you how much is going to be there at the end. Make sense? All right, let's go to part B. What is part B asking? You take how much? Okay, so they want to know after one day how much Advil is there if they took how much to start with? 600 milligrams. So what is the 600 milligrams in our formula? It's this one, right? P sub zero. So for part B, they're telling us P sub zero, the amount that they took in the beginning was 600 milligrams, right? Is there anything else we know? The time. And what does it say there? One day. So what's T going to be for us? What's that? 24 hours. So we have to be very careful. Because remember in our formula, we used 2 for T. And 2, we said, was measured in hours. So if they want to know how much drug is going to be there after a day, you have to convert the day to hours. Make sense? So T is going to be 24 hours. Critically important that you do not use one there. If you use one there, it's going to be incorrect. All right? Questions? We're almost there. We're just going to plug those into this, and we're going to have a calculator, and we'll get an answer. All right? So now, using that information, we use the formula. P equals 600 E to the negative point, uh, negative, 0 0.3466 times 24. Paris. Nope. Gabriella. Usually the day before the final, everyone's here. Marcus. Any volunteers? Who hasn't gone? David? Jared? David. David, there you are, David. Okay. Calculator? So when you, when you go about this, David, figure out what this is first, right? I would actually do that calculation. And then take your E and raise it to that. Or, you know, on, on the, if you're using the calculator you're supposed to use for the class, you should be able to crank this pretty much all out in one line. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for David to see if he can get us a final answer. And then we'll see if his answer makes sense. Raise your hand if you have an answer. Yes, a couple? Okay. So 
on the test, David, you'll have a calculator, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, because you don't want to be like at the final for the first time trying to do these. All right, so who, who wants to volunteer their answer? Or do you have something, David? What do you got? I got uh, 0 0.1464. 0 0.1464? I got the same thing. Okay, so what is this answer? We need to put a unit on this. Like, what is this? 0 0.1464 what? Milligrams. This is how much is left of the drug after a day. So there's still some there, right? Just, you know, not much. 0.14 milligrams, but it's still there, right? Now, if, if you asked how much was there two days later, you would change this to a 48, and you'd run the formula again, right? You want to know how much was there after a week? You'd have to do 24 times 7, right? and put that number here and you're going to get, it basically it's going to get really small and it's going to be negligible. Make sense? Okay. That's part B. How about part C? I just erased the damn formula. Part C. Okay, so part C, the question is saying, you take 800 milligrams, right? How long will it take to have how much left? Five milligrams. So you start out with 800 milligrams, right? And then at some point, it's going to decay down to five, right? And the question is, how long does this take? Right? How long does it take? So we use the same master formula, right? Our master formula that we came up with was P equals P naught E to the negative point uh, three, four, six, six. Was it six, six? Yes. 6,6 six, six, T, right? So what are the pieces of information that we have now? What is the 800 milligrams? The starting. So we know P sub zero is 800 milligrams. Okay, what is the five milligrams? That's what you want to end with, right? So P is the ending is five milligrams. So you're going to be able to put five here, 800 here, and then the only thing that we don't have would be T and then we'll go solve for t. Is this making sense or not? Okay. So we have 5 equals 800 e to the negative 0.3466t. Victor. Yeah, you've already been up, but Maybe you can get us started on this. So you would use the logarithm? You're, we're going to use the log because we're trying to solve for t and it's up in the exponent. Now, do I bring the log in now or do I need to do something first? So we have to be real careful with this, all right? Right now there's an 800 here. You see that? What I want is to isolate just the piece that's getting raised, right? The T in this thing is only acting on the E, right? I can't bring the log in until this is by itself. So your first step, what do you think? Is to uh, multiply the power. I'm saying I want this by itself, so I don't want the 800 here. So how can I get rid of the 800 on this side of the equation? Oh, right. Divide. Does that make sense, everyone? Divide the, you have to divide that 800 out first. Mm -hmm. Then you can bring the log in. All right, so you divide the left side by 800. You divide the right side by 800. All right. Now, on the left side, let's go ahead and... Now, well, now we'll bring it in, all right? We'll bring in the... Uh, We'll bring in the log now. Okay. Critical step there to divide both sides by 800. Nivany? No? Yeah? 
You caught up yet? Getting there? Do you have any questions, Nemini, on what's going on? We can, actually, we can, you mean like go to our calculators and get this? Yeah, I was going to. And then we're going to take natural log of that. So why don't you do that for me? Why don't you do the 5 divided by 800 and then take natural log and tell me what you get? And I'll, I'll verify your answer. Yep. Yeah, close. Let's just do that. That's fine. And then equals now Nivini. On the other side, the whole point of this, right, was to get this natural log with this so that we could, we could drop that out, right? And so when we drop this out in front, what happens to the natural log of E? It's just one. It's just one. So it's really just this, right? So negative 0.3466. I'm going to let you finish this T. Last step here would be to do what? Yep. Negative three uh, point three four four six or four six six. Sorry. So divide by negative point three four six six. Divide by negative point three four six six. And what did you get there? Six four. Close enough is T. And Nimini, what is that answer? Fourteen point six four. What? hours, right? Because T is time. So this is hours. So if you take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen or Advil, it's going to take 14.64 hours for there to be 5 milligrams left in your system. All right? Yes? This, this right here? Well, you have, to, you have to go back and look at what it means. And I talked about this last class. I said that when you write down natural log of E, what this really means is log base E of E. And so this is asking the question, E raised to what power gives you E? So what do I raise E to in order to get E? Just one. Right? 1. E to the first power is E. So natural log of E will always be 1. But would that ever change? Nope. Right. Natural log of E is always 1. So every time you're doing these problems with half-life, you'll always get a natural log of E, and it will always become 1. Same with the uh, compound interest. When you're doing that, when it's compounded continuously, you're always going to be using the shampoo formula. And you'll always have E in there, so that natural log of E will go and turn into 1. The only time it's not going to is um, like the problems I started class with today, or if your interest is compounded like monthly, we use that different formula. Yeah. But natural log of E is always 1. Okay, we good? We're going to run through another one. Yes. All right. And this will be it. This will be our last kind of example. Unless you want me to do another one of these afterward. So has anyone ever heard of carbon dating? Carbon dating? No? Yeah, in the museums, okay. So here's, here's the way this works. All living things, you, me, a plant, a bird, Every living creature on the planet always has a certain level of what's called carbon-14. Our bones have it. It's in us, okay? This thing called carbon-14. Our bodies make this stuff, and it always maintains like a full gas tank of carbon-14, all right? So a gas tank is a good analogy. Okay, so my carbon-14 gas tank is full right now. Yours is full. The tree, it has its own full gas tank. As soon as something dies, the carbon-14 starts to decay. Because you have to be alive in order to keep your tank full. But as soon as you die, or a tree 